Hello, boys and girls. Mr. Jim Meany. Coming to you the final lesson of Chapter 6. Our whole chapter dealing with perimeter area and volume. And it's going to be the volume and surface area of spheres. I always think of a sphere as a basketball, the globe. So, taking a look at what I have here. I already have a picture. Nice little picture I pulled off the internet. Uh, let's focus first on volume. We'll find both the volume and the surface area the same shape. Uh, today we're talking about in class why we have this four-thirds pi times the radius cubed. It is a little bit of an odd formula uh, based on what we've seen before. But we'll take a look at that today and get a more in-depth, a uh, little bit of intuition as to why that is. So taking a look, uh, I see that the diameter of this sphere is 12 inches. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug and play this value into this formula. So I'm going to go volume equals, I'll answer this in terms of pi leaving the pi, so we're not going to multiply pi by 3 and 14 hundredths, we're going to leave it as pi. So we have 4 thirds times pi. Now we're going to take that radius. Well, the diameter, the diameter equals 12. Uh, radius is equal to diameter times 1 half, or diameter, radius could also be equal to diameter divided by 2. So 12 divided by 2 gives me 6, so I have 6 cubed. All right, again, 6 to the third power. Does not mean 6 times 3. It means we're taking 6, our base, and multiplying it by itself. The number of times the exponent dictates, which is 6 times 6 times 6. So 6 to the third power. Using a calculator, uh, that gives me 4 thirds times pi. 6 to the third is 216. Now, remember, this is multiplication, so it is commutative. It does not matter the order that I multiply this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 4 thirds times 216. Now many of you are going to say, well, I'm going to multiply it by 1 and 1 third. I could do that. I'm just going to, I could also do it something like this. I could say, hey, 4 thirds, and I convert 216, make it into a fraction, which is really 216 divided by 1. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I actually see if I want to do it this way, 216, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 is a multiple of 3. That means 3 goes into both of these. So 3 goes into this one time. Uh, 216 divided by 3 gives me 72. I would then have 72 times 4, which gives me 288. And my answer in terms of pi would be 288 pi. And then it is cubic inches. Now, I can take that same answer and convert it into, if I want to say pi is equal to, 3 and 14 hundredths, I could take 3 and 14 hundredths and now times that by 288. That'll give me an answer of 904 and 32 hundredths, which typically they've been asking us to round it to the nearest tenth. So that is 904 and 3 tenths, and that is also cubic inches. Okay, so I actually have two answers here in terms of pi and then in terms of using. 3 and 14 hundredths to represent pi. Okay, that is for volume. Now, I'm going to erase this stuff. I'm going to come now with the surface area formula. I'm going to keep the same shape and actually the same diameter slash radius and radius to kind of help us expedite the process here. So let's take a look. All right, surface area. This might help if you ever one day in the future wrapping a globe or a basketball up for somebody as a gift. Uh, so we now have 4 times pi times radius squared. So I think of area, I think of squaring something, I think of volume, I think of cubing it. So when kind of discussing or thinking about what do I square the radius or do I cube it, think about when you're doing surface area, you square it, the answer. When you divide, you cube it. So that might help you remind uh, remind you about the formula. So I'm going to answer in terms of pi again and in terms of using 3 and 14 hundredths for pi. All right, so let's answer in terms of pi. First, we have 4 times pi times the radius, which we determined before was 6, and it's the radius squared. Okay, uh, I now have 4 times pi. Uh, 6 squared, 6 times 6 gives me 36. Because multiplication is commutative, I would just multiply 36 times 4. That gives me 24. That gives me 144 pi. And I have the same unit of measure. That is inches, square inches, sorry. 
And now if I want to answer that in terms of using 3 and 14 hundredths, let me make that little inches a little nicer for you. Or that square, sorry. If I want to answer it now in terms of using 3 and 14 hundredths to represent pi, I would then go 3 and 14 hundredths times 144. So 3 and 14 hundredths times 144. And that would give me the following answer. I have 452 and 16 hundredths, but I want to round that to the nearest tenth, so that would give me approximately 452 and 2 tenths, and it is also in square inches. All right, hope that helps. Have a great day. Bye.